Hello everyone, and welcome to Getting Started with Sketch. This is lesson number two, Interface Overview. Navigating through Sketch, basically. In the last video, I talked about the basics or the general interface overview of Sketch. And now, in this video, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. So, last time we talked about the toolbar up here which resembles that of the iWork suite of toolbars. We've talked briefly about the inspector panel and the layers panel, and a little bit about the application menu, which gives you access to some Sketch's most um, advanced tools. But we'll get into that later in the video. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of getting hands-on with Sketch. Now, to start off, if you've ever used a design application, or shall we say, you've dabbled in Photoshop a little bit, then Sketch should be easy enough for you to use, because there shouldn't be that uh, steep of a learning curve when using Sketch. For example, most of the things here in the toolbar are fairly straightforward, but let's start with the Shape tool, the most basic of tools in Sketch. If you've ever used the drawing tools within Keynote, Numbers, or Pages, the drawing tools within Sketch should feel just the same. Because Sketch is designed to work as if it were a default Mac application. So everything runs just as smoothly. So here, I'm going to use the Rectangle tool. Here in the, in the menu, you can see that you can use the keyboard to quickly draw, say, a line, rectangle, oval, or a rounded rectangle, common in today's use for interface design or even in web design. For example, I'll press R, and here we go. I can just click and drag to draw the shape. Let's start with a rectangle. There we go. For example, let's design a button. Button common almost everywhere, from app interfaces to even websites. So I'm going to shape my button here, and we're going to leave it at that. Notice how when I click on the shape, or shall I say, hover over it, it shows this blue line. Don't be frightened. It's not part of your design. That blue line actually signifies that this is that layer in the Layers panel. So you know which shape you're manipulating, and you know that it's not a duplicate of the other shape. For example, if I duplicate the shape, it's just sitting right on top of it. But I know that it's the one on top of the layer. If I move it around, You've got two of the identical layers. They look exactly the same, but because of this, you know which one is which in the Layers panel. Now let's start styling this button. Now, let's say I want this button to be an exact size or shape that I want. Here, in the Inspector panel, I can do that. This here is the input panel for the size. I can set it to, say, 120 pixels for a width and 32 pixels tall. There, perfect size. And say so I want this button about the same size, but slightly shorter. So let's give it a shorter width, say 100 pixels of a width, and the same 32 pixels height. Amazing, right? Now, let's style these buttons. Let's give them a nice embossed feel. Here in the inspector panel, you can see that you can customize each of your shapes according to the style that you want. So let's start with the fill. Here in the fill, I've gone into the color section of the fill inspector panel. And I can choose whatever color I want. If you first download the sketch, you'll see the sketch has its own default color palette, the basic few colors that you need. And if you've been using some design applications for a while, you'll see that some colors have been added, even though you haven't used Sketch before. What these colors are, are there, they are actually the swatches from your previous design application, or sh shall I say, the default Apple color picker. It integrates seamlessly so that you can just head off and start designing. Now, let's give this button a nice blue. Now we don't want to leave it at that, we want to give it a more embossed feel. So 
Here in the Inspector Fill Color panel, we've got the gradient, common in almost any design. And here you've got some preset gradients that come when you first dial on Sketch to show you a little bit of what Sketch can do. So here's the blue, the green, but you can actually make your own. See? Here at the shape, you can see these two color stops. Clicking on one enlarges one, meaning you've selected it. And you can scroll up here on the fill panel and choose the color that you want. So for example, let's give this a nice yellow. And because it's embossed, I want the same kind of yellow, but slightly darker. Now see what I just did there? I just used a color pick tool to pick the color of the top color without having to manually re-enter the same color right here in the hex panel. Ingenious. So here, it looks a bit flat because I've picked the same color essentially, but let's give it some depth. Give it a little bit of color. A bit of orange tint. A bit of saturation. And there we go. But that doesn't look that great, doesn't it? It's got that gray border that comes in drawing a default shape. We don't want that. So here in the inspector panel again, you've got something called borders. It's just as it does, it allows you to adjust the border color. Here you've got colors. Because it's a yellow shape, I, and I want this to have a darker sort of yellow kind of border to go with it. There we go. That looks better. But it feels as if it's incomplete to me. It doesn't look that embossed, but I want to add a little bit more, you know, oomph to give it that embossed look. So let me edit the shape again. Here we have the shadows tool. You can add a shadow, or even add multiple shadows, or remove some. So I can manually adjust the, the shadow here. Let's give it a really nice small shadow. And because this object is yellow, light shining from the object should reflect some sort of yellow light. But because it's also a shadow, it's going to be dark. So let's give it a yellow, but a really nice dark yellow shadow. There we go. Looks a bit more real world, doesn't it? But this shape looks a bit too sharp for my liking. Here in the inspector panel, you can adjust the radius of the shape. So, I can give it a nice round radius, or give it a little bit less. Perfect. But it doesn't feel that great or complete. Let's do it again. Here in the inspector panel, we've got something called inner shadows. Let's add one now. But because we don't want this shape to look too wacky, we want it to look as if it's embossed, not pushed in and out at the same time. Not like an optical illusion. So let's adjust this a bit. Instead of giving it a dark shadow, we want to give it a bright shadow, as if some highlights were right on top of it. Here, I've just picked the color of the, the button, and I'm going to make it a nice bright color. There we go. Now that is a nice looking button. But we've got the shape here. I don't want to do that whole thing again. So instead, I'm going to copy this style and paste it onto that. So I just right clicked, copy the style, and paste it. Now I want this button to have a light, the same kind of border radius. I can adjust it to any way I want, or I can go full on. There we go, two buttons. And that's the general overview with Sketch and the Inspector panel.